Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about SPF, the sun protection factor, because there is a little bit of a, some, uh, rather a lot of confusion about what uh, SPF actually means. So it is the uh, sun protection factor. Uh, but uh, if you have something called um, an SPF 15 and you have an SPF of 30, does the SPF 30 then protect you double as good? Well, in order to find out that, we need to look into what uh, is actually measured when they are looking at the SPF uh, scale. Because uh, it is so that uh, when they look at it, they will simply uh, see how many photons from the UV light that penetrates through the uh, sunscreen and uh, into your skin. And uh, if you have uh, an SPF of uh, 15, then uh, about uh, 93 or 94, uh, it's kind of like between there, uh, percent of the photons bombarded onto your skin will be stopped by the uh, SPF filter. But that means that roughly six photons out of a hundred photons will penetrate through the SPF filter and uh, onto your skin. So when uh, the number of 30 comes in, uh, which is double of 15, it simply means that if you have 15, you get six photons for every hundred photons that are sent onto your skin. But if you have an SPF of 30, you only get three of those six photons onto your skin. So in that sense, it makes sense to say that you have an SPF 15, which lets in a certain amount of photons. And when you double the SPF number, it lets in half the amount. So that is the way uh, it works. And that is why the difference between uh, SPF 30 and SPF 50 is not that great, particularly because when you look at the scale, you will see, and I will show you in a moment, a little picture of how something, uh, a scale like that looks very simplified, but the scale simply goes very steep up and then it becomes very flat at the top. And for an SPF 15, you very quickly, uh, if as the SPF goes up, so if you kind of like take an SPF of 15, you, uh, you will hit uh, the top, um, the roof of the curve very quickly. And if you take an SPF of 30, then you are just a little bit further along at the top. And an SPF of 50 is even further along the top layer. But you very much come up to the top layer of the curve very quickly. And I will just show you now a, a little picture of uh, a curve uh, like uh, that. So uh, the difference between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50 is uh, not that great. And normally you would say that an SPF of 30 is uh, blocking about 97% uh, of the photons that are bombarded onto the skin. And an SPF of 50 is uh, stopping uh, about 98% uh, uh, of uh, the photons that are bombarded onto your skin. And that means that the difference between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50 is about 1% uh, point. So why are people then saying that something is uh, protecting you double and not as good and only half and so on. That is because they are focusing on uh, the amount of photons that are actually reaching your skin. So in that sense, if you have six photons that are reaching your skin and you say that is 100%, then uh, something that will allow only half of that amount will uh, give you only three photons. So only 50% of what the other one gave. So in that sense, People are, and I'm, I don't know if I should use the word uh, um, they are manipulating or whatever, but I think it's about um, cherry picking um, data in order to emphasize a point. 
but you cannot just cherry pick. You need to look at the entire picture and find out what is actually going on. So the difference between an SPF of 30 and 50 is only 1% uh, point. Now, then people will go in and say, oh, but what about UVA? Because it is so that uh, in the EU, there is a, a mark for UVA, uh, which is the UVA in a circle. And that means that um, if you have uh, an SPF of 30, which is only for the UVB rays, then if you have the UVA mark in a circle, it means that the EU has given uh, the stamp and saying that this gives at least a third of the SPF uh, 30, for example, for the UVA. So if you have a sun cream like uh, a sunscreen, uh, like the one I use from uh, La Roche Posay, and it looks like this, you might uh, see that down here there is a little mark, and that is the UVA in a circle. So I know that when the SPF is 30, then as a minimum, the SPF for UVA is and it does make sense to say SPF because that's the um, more like the burning factor where the UVA is more for aging and damaging of uh, the skin. But it has to be at least uh, what is equal to uh, an SPF of 10. So a third of the SPF of 30. So then people will go in and say, oh, but if you then take an SPF of 50, then and you're having a sun cream, a sunscreen where you are only having uh, a third uh, for the UVA protection, then you are down with actually having a UVA protection of what is equal to an SPF of 16 and a half if it's a third of 50. And comparing that to an SPF of 30, which only have a protection of uh, a third for the UVA, then you there would be down to an SPF of only 10. And then people say, oh, but the difference between SPF 10 and SPF 16 and a half, oh, th that, that's quite a lot. I mean, uh, the 16 and a half, it must be at least half as good or 1.5 better. Um, but it's not like that because again, we have to go in and look at the uh, SPF scale. And uh, it is so that if you're looking at the uh, SPF um, of 10, then uh, the um, amount of uh, is uh, about 90%. Uh, so if for the SPF, 10. But if you go up to like uh, an SPF 15, which is normally one of those numbers that you see, so it's kind of like a little bit below 16 and a half, then you would be up at uh, 93 into 94. So sometimes you would see a 93 and sometimes people say 94. So kind of like in that range. So what that means is that if you have 16 and a half to be more precise, then you are maybe a little bit above that. So you might say that you would be at the high end of what is normally called the uh, SPF uh, 15, uh, because uh, 16 and a half would be so close that you most likely cannot really measure uh, easily how uh, the difference would be. So just roughly the difference between an SPF of 10 and an SPF of uh, 16 and a half would be like 90% uh, photons you are protected from those, but with the uh, SPF of 16 and a half, you are protected for uh, 94%. So that means that the difference between SPF 10 and an SPF of 16 and a half is uh, about uh, 4% points. So does that make a huge difference as some would lead you to, to think or believe? Um, I don't know if that makes a huge difference difference. But my point is that often when you see videos where these things are uh, explained, your takeaway message is that you should use uh, an SPF 50 because if you only use an SPF of 30, you only get half the uh, protection. But there they are looking at the amount of photons that are hitting your skin. And that is a very small proportion compared to the bigger picture where you are 
usually protected for about 90% of the photons that are bombarded uh, onto your skin, even if you go as low as a um, SPF of 10. So um, my point here is that I am uh, online with those dermatologists that are saying that you should use uh, an SPF of uh, 30 and you should uh, choose uh, one that has a broad spectrum uh, and uh, you should use uh, so that means that it has uh, the UVA protection uh, as well and I would uh, totally go for one that has the um, UVA mark in a circle and I think that maybe in Australia I hear they have some of the same sort of um, regulations with one third and so on. I'm not quite up to date on how it is in Australia uh, but I know that it is a uh, different uh, in America and in general sunscreens are treated differently uh, in America so they are treated like a, a medical thing and needs to go through uh, various uh, procedures and there are issues uh, with that. That's why there are differences between sunscreens bought in uh, Europe and uh, bought in uh, America. Now, uh, if uh, you have uh, the UVA in a circle, it simply means that it is minimum of a third of the uh, SPF factor for the UVA. So uh, it could actually be that um, if you have an SPF of uh, 30, and you compare it to an SPF of 50, and both of them have this uh, UVA in a circle, then it could actually be so that the SPF 50 only barely has a third of the uh, SPF factor for their UVA protection, but the SPF with the only SPF of uh, 30 might have a, a higher amount uh, of protection for the UVA because it is just a minimum. So it could actually be a much higher UVA protection in uh, an SPF of 30 compared to an SPF of uh, 50. It all depends on how much uh, of these uh, filters that are in the uh, product. So if you want to be sure that um, your UVA protection is up at the level of the SPF, so at the level of SPF uh, 30 or 50, then uh, there is something else you can use. And that uh, I think is only here in, in, in Europe. Uh, it might be if the same products are sold in America or in Australia, they have the same sort of rating, but it's a rating that's called uh, the star rating. And uh, that was uh, made by a boot in, I think in the early eighties or seventies or something like that, uh, in order to um, check how good the UVA protection was. So if you see, uh, for example, uh, there is a company called uh, Pitts Boeing and some of those very sunscreens that you always see on sale, even in uh, the supermarkets. Um, and they have, uh, I think in Nivea, they have this star rating on some of their products uh, as well, uh, and Garnier. Uh, but uh, if you have one uh, that has um, the star rating of uh, five, then you know that uh, the Boots system has checked uh, that sunscreen and the UVA protection is at the level of the SPF uh, factor. So that is one way of uh, making sure that you get a good uh, UVA protection because the point here is that you could actually get a much better UVA protection from an SPF of 30 compared to uh, an SPF of uh, 50. It all depends on how much uh, UVA filters there are in the product. So a minimum of a third doesn't really guarantee you anything else but that it's a minimum of a third. But uh, it could be much better one product compared to uh, another. So uh, for the one I use, uh, that is the, the uh, La roche Uh I just go with the fact that it has at least uh, one third of the UVA and then I just uh, cross my fingers that uh, it is uh, way higher. Uh, choosing some of those other ones that are having the five star rating uh, may mean that you are coming into a sunscreen which is more not so nice performing on your skin and something I would say I would use this uh, on a daily basis but if I went to the beach or did something where I knew I would have to stay in the sun for a prolonged period of time and it wasn't so much about if I was looking good or not uh, then I would uh, choose the uh, one that had the uh, five star rating. It is not to say that there are not really good five star rated 
products uh, that will look great on your skin and won't be oily and you know will perform well uh, it's just usually when i see those uh, five star ones it is usually a uh, garnier or it's a uh, nivea or it's a uh, this uh, pitch uh, boin uh, or there is a uh, another product uh, which is um, a product uh, from a company called uh, Riemann uh, which I have spoken about uh, before as well but I think that is really I would only use that if I went uh, to the beach because it's uh, really sticky uh, on the skin so uh, yes it's I think it's about uh, finding out what are your needs do you need a sunscreen just for daily in and out of the office and just so on uh, you might not uh, need a really uh, strong one that um, has the very high UVA, but if you're going to the beach or if you're going to do some garden work or you are spending uh, your lunch hour outside in the sun, um, it might be that you need uh, something a little bit uh, stronger where you know that it is rated with five stars so that you know that the UVA is at the level of the SPF. So uh, yes, uh, hopefully uh, this was something that um, you could learn a little bit from and uh, make gave you a better understanding of what the SPF and the UVA factor actually is. And uh, if you look it up, then you could look at uh, SPF uh, scale and uh, the SPF scale and um, the graph and stuff like that. And then you will see those uh, graphs. And I will put a link to some of them uh, below in the uh, box below. So you can uh, have a look at them yourself and you can go in and see oh, how much does an SPF 5 give and how does a 20 give and 30. And then you can see that difference isn't that, uh, there isn't that much of a difference. You have to go really low in protection to make a really uh, much of a difference. The main uh, problem as i mentioned earlier is that people are simply uh, using too little of uh, the uh, sunscreen and particularly if you are maybe just using a, a moisturizer that has an spf in it then uh, the chances are that you are not uh, slathering it on as much as uh, you should and for one thing maybe because it's a very expensive uh, product so the point here is that you should use the amount of SPF that is needed and that is about the way they test it and that is two milligram per square centimeter and that is uh, usually quite um, a heavy amount. So uh, for me when I use the La Roche-Posay here it is about uh, half a teaspoon or a little less but that is my teaspoon. Your teaspoon might look uh, differently. So I will uh, make another video and I will tell you how I found out how big my face actually is and how much uh, of the uh, product I should then uh, put on. So uh, if you like this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell and do all those things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of these sort of uh, videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.